Hello and welcome to Eastern Roman History. After so many centuries of existence, the Eastern Roman Empire had its fair share of leaders. These larger-than-life personalities and shrinking violets were the key figures of their age, and were often how the Eastern Romans themselves structured their histories. The following is Eastern Roman history's ranking of Eastern Roman emperors from Constantine I to Constantine XI, from worst to best. Alexios III Angelos Alexios III was a corrupt wastrel that blinded his brother for the throne. He allowed corruption to run rampant, and abuses of power were common during his reign. He did nothing to prevent many of the empire's provinces from slipping into independence and barely held his empire together. He ultimately left the empire unable to deal with the Fourth Crusade when it arrived and would later instigate an invasion that nearly destroyed the fledgling Nicene Empire of Theodore I. Michael VII Ducas Fighting a civil war to claim the throne, Michael VII adopted a ruinous economic policy that caused a famine and widespread hardship. Additionally, he lost most of Anatolia to the Turks and was overthrown by two different rebellions against him. There is barely any aspect of his reign that does not employ a pejorative. But he did defeat a Bulgarian revolt. Andronicus IV Paleologos Andronicus IV fought civil wars against his father and brother, often at the empire's expense even selling Gallipoli to the Turks to do so. Once he secured the throne, he lost it after being dragged into a war between Genoa and Venice. He then spent most of the remainder of his life in a cold war with John V, finally dying when the conflict heated up. John V Paleologus John V's single success during his reign was his repeated ability to win civil wars for an empire which was unceasingly weakened by them. He had very little skill at diplomacy. He was not much of a commander, nor a statesman. Constantine X Ducas Constantine X demobilised the army and instituted military cuts just when the empire was increasingly embattled on three different fronts, leaving Italy, the East, and the Balkans in a precarious position. Although he did focus on improving the judiciary. He also led a persecution of the Armenian church. Andronicus I Comnenos Despite standing up for peasants and local authorities, Andronicus I was a tyrant who murdered his way into power, presiding over the massacre of the western population of Constantinople. He murdered most of his opponents and was so hated after two years of rule, he was lynched because he failed to stop a Norman invasion in 1185. Andronicus II Paleologus Despite some successes, Andronicus II blundered for 40 years from one failed policy to another. He lost nearly half of his empire's territory, the economy weakened, the army was ineffective, he disbanded the navy, corruption grew, and, finally, he led the empire into a civil war, all of which were, at least in part, his fault. He was, however, successful at healing the religious schisms left by his father. Focus Focus was a tyrant whose reign was marked by rebellions, civil wars, and the beginning of the loss of the eastern provinces to the Persians. That he survived was an achievement, but was accomplished through an increasingly paranoid reign of terror. Alexios IV Angelos Alexios IV was unable to fulfil his ludicrous promises to the Fourth Crusade, and rapidly lost the support of both his own citizens and the Latins leading to his own assassination after only a few months in power. The road to hell is paved in good intentions, for he brought the Crusade to Constantinople to put his father back on the throne and further support the Crusade. Alexios V, Ducus Mutsufalus after murdering the previous emperor, Alexios V tried and failed to repel the Fourth Crusade, which subsequently sacked Constantinople. He escaped only to be blinded by Alexios III, and was later executed by the Crusaders in Constantinople, by throwing him from the top of Constantine's column, for murdering Alexios IV. Basiliscus Basiliscus successfully won the throne from Zeno, 
and after a year, he successfully lost his throne to the same man, thanks to his own poor decisions and ineptitude. Philippicus Philippicus was a playboy emperor that reopened a closed religious controversy, eliminated the Heraclean dynasty, and caused six years of weak rule, which nearly destroyed the empire. Michael VI Bringas Michael VI was a puppet whose favouritism and lack of gregariousness caused a bloody civil war that he lost and forced him to abdicate. Alexios II Komnenos While the boy himself was not to blame, his regents mismanaged the empire's affairs so badly that their rule was marked by territorial loss, rebellion, and their demise as well as their charge. Michael I Rangabi Michael I was a brainless fool who, having ousted his brother-in-law, started a persecution that nobody wanted and led the empire to a significant defeat through his dithering that lost the empire most of Thrace and his own throne. Artabastos Artabastos was a successful general and a proponent of iconoclasm under Emperor Leo III, but once Leo died, Artabastos tried to depose his brother-in-law and, although he initially defeated him and took Constantinople, he lost the city and his eyes after three years of bitter civil war. Constantine VI Constantine VI tried to match the reputation of his grandfather and mother but replaced victory with defeat, religious harmony with scandal, and was eventually blinded and deposed by his political opposition led by his mother. Arcadius Arcadius was a weak, jellyfish-like emperor whose inability to rule meant that his empire was characterised more by the ministers, bishops and women around him than himself. His only notable accomplishment was the defeat of the Goths led by Tribigild and Gynas. Heraclonus Really the reign of Heraclonus's mother Martina, she was very unpopular but tried her best to keep her son's throne and deal with the Arab invasion of Egypt. She failed at both. Zoe Leaving the rule of the empire to her husbands, Zoe often was caught up in scandals and intrigues at court and against her sister. She was, however, very popular and charitable. Leontius Leontius was a decent emperor, but the loss of Africa, though not his fault, was a major blow to the empire and resulted in his deposition. Romanus IV Diogenes Romanus IV was a good emperor who succeeded in combating the Turks and reforming the army. However, Italy was lost and the defeat at the Battle of Manzikert left a hole in Byzantine defences later exploited by the Turks. His capture in battle also resulted in a civil war which he lost. Valens. Valens followed his brother's domestic reforms, but had mixed success in foreign affairs. He was killed at the Battle of Adrianople, which was one of the empire's most famous defeats. Michael II. Michael II murdered his way onto the throne and fought a civil war with the dead emperor's avenger, Thomas the Slav, for three years. His economic reforms helped rebuild the monetary economy and he was a moderate in the renewed religious controversy over iconoclasm, but lost both Crete and much of Sicily to the Moors and Saracens, partly as a consequence of the civil war that solidified his rule. Justin II Justin II balanced the budget, was a keen builder and a patron of the arts, but his foreign policy led to losses against the Lombards, Avars and especially the Persians, the last of which was an unmitigated disaster. These failures caused him to lose his sanity, and eventually he abdicated. Constantine II Named after his father, Constantine II squandered his reign quarrelling with his brother, Constans, who he subsequently attacked, but was killed in his opponent's rearguard action. Michael V While not necessarily a bad emperor, Michael V's gross misjudgment of the popularity of the Empress Zoe led to a revolution in Constantinople, resulting in his deposition after only a few months of coming to power. Alexander 
Alexander struggled to assert his authority over the church and wanted another try at the Bulgars who defeated his brother. Probably dying when he became emperor, he was dead after 13 months, having left neither legacy fulfilled. Romanus III Argyros Romanus III's ambitions far outstripped his abilities, leading his forces into disaster at the Battle of Azaz. His personal failures were made up for by better subordinates, and was himself a better church builder than an emperor. Most people disliked him when he was alive, and quickly moved on once he was dead. Valentinian II Valentinian II was a non-entity who reigned, but was never allowed to rule. His attempt to assert his own power ended in his death, be it suicide or murder. Storasius Mortally wounded when Storasius became emperor, his deteriorating condition meant he could not assert his own authority and was rapidly forced to abdicate by his brother-in-law and his supporters. Leo II Leo II crowned his father Zeno as co-emperor and reigned for a few months until he died when he was still a child. John IV Ducus Lascaris Since John IV was a boy, he was rapidly overtaken by court politics, leading to his father's friend and regent being murdered and replaced within days. Notably, Constantinople was recovered during his brief reign. However, this victory inspired his co-emperor, Michael VIII, to subsequently blind John and forced him to abdicate. Michael IX Paleologus Michael IX bravely led the empire's ill-equipped and poorly trained armies to victory against its many foes during the reign of his father and co-emperor. It is little wonder that he failed, but his subjects respected him for trying. Theodosius III Thrust into the role of emperor, Theodosius III prepared the empire for an impending Arab invasion and quietly entered into exile after a revolt. Heraclius Constantine III Heraclius Constantine III was a competent emperor that did what he could to stem the Arab invasions of Anatolia and Egypt, despite suffering from a terminal illness. Furthermore, he had to deal with factionalism with the proponents of his cousin and stepmother, Martina. Isaac II Angelos Isaac II was a paragon of mediocrity. He caused the Bulgarian Vlach Revolt, had to deal with various rebellions, the Third Crusade, and a Norman invasion, as well as multiple internal problems. His mix of successes and failures were results that still outstripped the achievements of his immediate predecessors or successors. Irene Sarantapakina A competent regent who began the reconquest of Greece and ended the first iconoclast controversy. However, her regency and actual reign were punctuated by failure abroad, conspiracies and factionalism that led to her deposition after five years. Jovian Jovian extracted his army from Julian's failed invasion of Persia, but died before accomplishing much else. Constantine VIII Constantine VIII had a short yet competent reign militarily, defeating foreign threats and an internal rebellion. He lowered taxes and was very charitable, but a rushed succession led to future uncertainty. Anastasius II Anastasius II prepared Constantinople for an impending siege and mended the reopened religious schism instigated by his predecessor, but was deposed because of the circumstances surrounding his rise to power. Tiberius III Tiberius III and his brother managed to check the Arab invasion and saw to the aftermath of the fall of Africa, but failed to placate Justinian II, who deposed and executed them. Nicephorus III Nicephorus III was an old veteran who attempted to deal with the empire's military and economic problems and suppressed several rebellions, but the last of these rebels deposed him. Constantine XI Paleologus Constantine XI was a competent emperor, who had a largely successful stint as despot of the Maria, and worked well with his brothers, the Emperor John VIII and Thomas, despot of Achaea. As emperor, he could be both shrewd and make significant mistakes. For example, 
He sought alliances from various powers in Europe, such as Hungary and the Pope, to protect the empire from Ottoman attack and maintain church union to encourage more aid from the West. However, he assigned his traitorous brother, Demetrius, as despot of Maria, which only led to bitter and costly infighting between Demetrius and Thomas. Finally, his leadership and careful preparation meant that during the siege of Constantinople in 1453, it was only in the final assault that the enemy broke through the defences, resulting in his death and the end of the empire. John the Seventh Paleologus Initially a half-successful usurper, John the Seventh later led the defence of Constantinople for four years, successfully negotiated the return of several of the empire's territories, and adroitly governed Thessalonica for the rest of his life. John the Sixth Cantacuzanos John the Sixth was a controversial emperor who undertook a bloody and long civil war to take the throne. Once he took it, he did everything in his power to undo the damage of the Paleologan civil war and the Black Death. Though hampered by the loss of Gallipoli in the last year of his reign, that he even achieved partial success was an accomplishment in itself against the empire's many enemies. Had he championed his own cause more rather than bow to John V, he might well have benefited the empire more than his successor. Constantine the Ninth Monomachos Thrust into the emperorship, Constantine the Ninth was, in some respects, a bit of a buffoon, but on the other, a savvy statesman, and he successfully suppressed two usurpations, defeated the last Viking attack on Constantinople, conquered the rest of Armenia, and was a patron of learning and instigated judicial reform. That he could not defeat the Pechenegs or Normans, and pursued some misguided internal policies, are marks against him, but was a far better emperor than many of his contemporaries, who achieved far less. Theodora Theodora was a competent empress, whose one year of rule was generally successful. She had also led the revolution against Michael V. Theodora was the last woman to hold power as Empress Regnant. John VIII Paleologos Despite limitations, John VIII completed the conquest of the Peloponnese, and he chose a decent successor, and through church union secured a crusade against the Turks. That it failed was not his fault. Michael IV Despite rebellions and tax riots, sometimes caused by his useless family members, Michael IV was generally a successful emperor who nearly retook Sicily, defeated a major Bulgarian revolt, and secured the succession. Isaac I Comnemnos Isaac I was a short-reigning but successful emperor who attended to the empire's economic issues and was victorious against the Hungarians. Leo IV Despite a short reign, he defeated the Arabs, secured the succession, enlarged the army, and pursued a more moderate policy towards the religious controversy of iconoclasm. Gratian Despite being a successful soldier and possessing some political savvy, Gratian's inexperienced and polarising rule angered many, which caused a rebellion that overthrew and killed him. Justinian II Justinian II successfully led campaigns against the Arabs and Bulgars, as well as passed many reforms. His unpopularity led to his overthrow, but achieved his own restoration to power. He met with mixed results in his second reign, and was eventually killed by a rebellious army from Crimea. Julian The Emperor Julian was a flash in the pan for some, and a new Constantine for others, being the only pagan emperor after Constantine the Great, a Neoplatonist to be precise. He was a successful commander, and won a victory against the Germans on the Rhine. He was a reformer, and seriously considered how paganism might challenge Christianity theologically and structurally. Despite his intelligence and promise, his invasion of Persia was a disaster for his army, and cost him his own life. Constans I Constans I was a good commander and reformer. He worked generally well with Emperor Constantius II, and when they had disagreements, they were often of a religious nature, and managed to avoid conflict unlike with Constantine II. However, his unpopular policies and personal life contributed to his murder. Leo I 
Leo I was a successful emperor that helped the declining Western Roman Empire, secured the succession, eliminated the powerful family of Aspar, and created the Excubitors. His greatest failure was not his fault, but the failed Carthage expedition bankrupted the Eastern Roman Empire and doomed the Western Empire. Theodore II Ducus Lascaris Theodore II continued the work of his father in reconquering regions in Thrace and Asia Minor, as well as rebuffing the looming threat of the Mongols. He defended the Nicene Empire, but his short reign and ill health limited the scope of his efforts at reform. Michael III For a two-year-old, Michael III's reign was dominated by his regents and favourites. However, these regents achieved the end of the iconoclast controversy, expanded Constantinople's cultural influence, and continued the empire's financial and military recovery. In contrast, Michael and his regents were often embroiled in intrigues and assassinations, and once Michael gained sole rule, he handled affairs so poorly he was assassinated. Romanus II Romanus II was a short-lived playboy emperor that possessed enough savvy to appoint good people to the right jobs. Under his rule, Crete was restored to the empire after over a century of occupation. He reorganised the Tagmata and continued the policies of his learned father. His reign was unfortunately cut short due to his hedonistic habits and ill health. Theodosius I Theodosius I was proclaimed emperor after the death of Valens and quickly had to challenge the Visigoths, who were rampaging through the Balkans with limited resources. That he achieved any success was certainly a feat. That he and Gratian managed to pacify the Visigoths was a significant achievement. Theodosius was victorious against the usurpers, Magnus Maximus and Eugenius. Furthermore, it is with Theodosius I, with whom we can credit Constantinople being treated as the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire, rather than just a capital. He endorsed Nicene Christianity. He certainly made mistakes, such as his appointment of the general Arbogast to the court of Valentinian II, but also had his fair share of successes. He established a long legacy with his dynasty holding the empire for the next 80 years. Justin I Justin I was a competent ruler who seized the throne during a series of power plays in court. He was a persecutor of Aryan heretics and Monophysite Christians. He sponsored the Ethiopian expedition against the Jewish Himurite kingdom in Arabia. Justin I nearly achieved a de-escalation of tensions between the Romans and Persians, but failed, and started the Iberian War which his successor Justinian would conclude. Constantius II A highly controversial emperor, Constantius II was on the one hand a man who allowed corruption to run rampant, pursued the Aryan controversy to no advantage, increased taxes, and acted with cruelty, but on the other hand, he successfully defeated every usurper that appeared during his 27-year reign, punished his tyrannical cousin Constantius Gallus, was an active builder and prevented civil war by giving his rival the throne on his deathbed. Leo V Though reigning for only seven years, Leo V defeated the Bulgars, establishing a peace that lasted 80 years. He also won victories in the east against the Arabs and was an excellent administrator. Unfortunately, much of the details of what he did have been lost, but even to his opponents, he was remembered for the high quality of his statesmanship. Morris Morris rescued the empire from invasions by the Persians and Evars, securing peace and a, and a degree of stability in the majority of the empire after decades of war and devastation. He pursued parsimonious policies as a solution to the empire's fiscal issues that eventually cost him his life and imperiled the empire once more after a successful reign of 20 years. Tiberius II Constantine In eight years, Tiberius II stabilised the dire situation on the eastern frontier caused by his predecessor. He sent aid to neglected parts of the empire and secured the succession. Later 7th century emperors would name themselves Tiberius, probably to emulate Tiberius II's success. Valentinian I Valentinian I was an energetic soldier emperor who was victorious against his foreign and internal enemies. 
He built up the empire's infrastructure, created new laws, and encouraged a policy of religious toleration between Christianity and paganism. Marcion. Marcion was a successful emperor who helped destroy the Hunnish Confederation, attempted to resolve the ongoing religious issues of the age, and sorted out the empire's finances. Nikephorus II Focus. Nikephorus II was a consummate soldier emperor. He conquered Cilicia, Cyprus, and Antioch. He also set the Rus against the Bulgarians, leading to their submission and breaking their power in the Balkans. His internal reforms were important, but unpopular, and he so mismanaged home affairs that he was eventually assassinated. John I Zimiscus. He was a very competent military commander, as well as a good statesman and diplomat. He crushed the Rus invasion that had conquered Bulgaria. He conquered half of Bulgaria itself and forced the emirate of Aleppo to become an imperial vassal, all within three years. The rest of his reign went very well. Theophilus. Though achieving limited military success and a fanatical persecutor of iconophiles during the major religious controversy of the age, Theophilus was responsible for many fundamental administrative, military, financial, and cultural reforms that significantly contributed to the revival of the empire in the 9th century. Andronicus III, together with his friend John Cantacuzanos, worked tirelessly to revive the Eastern Roman Empire during a long period of decline in civil war. Corruption was rooted out, the judiciary and law were reformed, as was the army. The navy was reconstituted, and although campaigns against the Ottomans and Bulgarians failed, others against Genoa, Epirus, and Serbia were more successful, leading to significant territorial gains. Michael VIII Palaeologus Retaking Constantinople, Michael VIII steered the empire through a host of existential threats, including further crusades, the belligerent Charles of Anjou, and the Mongols. He expanded the empire's European provinces, reformed the military and administration, and invested significant resources in restoring Constantinople. However, he was extremely controversial as a ruler and undermined the empire's provinces in Asia Minor to weaken internal opposition. He started two religious controversies and blinded John IV as regent to gain sole power. Zeno Deposed early in his reign, Zeno retook his throne and spent much of the rest of it dealing with a plethora of rivals and the Ostrogoths. Surviving all of them, he reformed the empire and attempted to deal with a major religious controversy with some degree of success. Nikephorus I Nikephorus I was a controversial emperor who had a mix of victories and defeats with the Arabs and especially the Bulgars. He also faced several rebellions and mutinies, but survived them all, resolved the imperial dispute with Charlemagne, reinforced the empire's enclaves in the west, and reclaimed Greece. He also issued fundamental military, administrative, and economic reforms that significantly contributed to the empire's recovery in the 9th century, and achieved all of this within nine years. Leo VI Leo VI, though having a mixed military record, made gains in Italy and Anatolia. He created a fresh legal code, which would be used until the 14th century. He further reformed the provincial administration and army, but caused significant religious controversy in his quest to have a son. He was also a learned man and patronised the arts. Basil I Basil I was a successful emperor who made territorial gains in Italy and the East. He was an active builder of public works. He reformed the legal code, as well as being a patron of the arts. Basil I established a dynasty that lasted nearly 200 years. Constantine IV Constantine IV saved Constantinople from a siege by the Arabs, as well as invasions into Anatolia. He ended the Monophylite controversy, restoring unity in the church, saved Thessalonica from Slavic attack, attempted to revalue the currency, and suppressed internal threats to the succession. In contrast to his general success as a ruler, he was defeated by the Bulgars who settled in Thrace 
and the Lombards continued to secure territory in Italy. Theodore I Lascaris, starting out with virtually nothing other than his wife's good name, Theodore I went on to build a tough and viable successor state to the Eastern Roman Empire. Theodore I survived multiple invasions by the Latins and Turks, and lay the foundations for the recovery of the empire within 60 years of its apparent fall. Leo III. Leo III saved the empire from destruction by achieving victory during the Arab siege of Constantinople, and permanently crushed Arab hopes of conquering the Eastern Roman Empire. Although he was responsible for making iconoclasm the religious controversy of the age an official imperial policy, he significantly reformed the empire's administration and legal code. He was so successful that his dynasty would last the rest of the century, and for the next 200 years, subsequent emperors would name one of their children Leo. Constance II, the son, grandson, great-grandson and nephew of Roman emperors named Heraclius, and originally named Heraclius, Constance II, who came to the throne at a young age, had to stop the full-scale invasion of the Eastern Roman Empire by the Arabs in Anatolia, Egypt, and by sea. He had mixed results, but managed to hold the line, and devoted more time than any other emperor to securing the frontiers of the remaining parts of the Roman Empire in Italy, Africa, and the Balkans. He started to fundamentally reform the empire to cope with its new circumstances, and established a new professional navy, but he was constantly challenged by usurpers. His unpopular yet necessary decisions eventually brought about his own assassination. Theodosius II Under Theodosius II's long reign, the Eastern Roman Empire matured into its own entity, with a strong, centralised state under the emperor's direction, and avoided most of the issues experienced by the Western Roman Empire. Though Theodosius II could not best Attila the Hun, he was generally successful elsewhere. He established the first imperially sponsored legal code for the empire, established the University of Constantinople, proactively rooted out usurpers, was a patron of the arts, and brought much needed stability during uncertain times. Constantine VII, an important patron of the arts and literature, Constantine VII came to the throne as a child, under a series of regents that eventually pushed him aside. He possessed the wherewithal to not only retake the throne from the usurper Romanus I and his sons, but was also a highly successful emperor in his own right. He was a contributor to the spread of Byzantine influence to Russia, he continued the conquests made by his father-in-law, Romanus I, in southern Italy and Cilicia, he was a successful diplomat, and passed stricter land laws to protect the property of peasant smallholders. Romanus I Lecapenos Romanus I was a usurper who fundamentally changed Eastern Roman strategy in the East to be more expansionist, beginning the Age of Conquest. He stifled Bulgarian attacks in the Balkans and eventually managed to arrange a lasting peace. Romanus I successfully dealt with the Great Famine, introduced new land laws, and was a very successful emperor. Alexios I Komnemnos Alexios I suffered several major military reverses in his early reign, but stemmed the tide of Norman and Pechenegg invasions with some good diplomacy and rather extraordinary measures. As his reign went on, his harsh measures, high taxes, and heresy trials started to bear fruit for the great recovery of his later reign. Under his guidance, the economy and coinage was restored, the administration reformed, a professional military was reconstituted, with the help of the First Crusade, swarves of territory were reconquered, and various other social and cultural changes were made. Alexios I changed so much that it is said that under his reign, even the nature of imperial rule was left altered. The legacy of Alexios I would be felt for the rest of the Middle Ages. To top off these achievements, he established a dynasty that lasted 104 years, and later they would rule the splinter state of the Empire of Trebizond. John II Komnenos, Almost completely overshadowed by the achievements of both of his father and son, it was the soldier emperor John II Komnemnus 
who made the Eastern Roman Empire the apex power in the Eastern Mediterranean Sea in the 12th century. His constant wars consolidated the empire's possessions in the Balkans and Anatolia from rebels and foreign invaders alike. Public work projects were begun under his reign, as well as important administrative, economic and political reforms. A century later, when John III Vatetsi started minting gold coins again, he used the designs of John II's reign as his model. The reign of John II Comnemnus was one of social stability, economic security, military supremacy and ecclesiastical peace. Thus, he was fondly remembered as the greatest Comnemnian emperor. Manuel II Paleologos, a soldier, statesman, diplomat, author, philosopher, theologian, and patriot, Manuel II, despite having virtually no resources, managed to preserve for over 37 years and even enlarge his city-state empire, accomplishing what many of his contemporaries in Bulgaria, Serbia, his own empire, and elsewhere had struggled and failed to do throughout his life. Plus, he was the first emperor of the Romans to visit England since Constans I. Constantine V. Constantine V had to fight for his throne, and once he won it, he proved to be such a successful general that virtually every emperor wanted to emulate him in the 8th and 9th centuries. He was an important legal reformer, undertook several major public works projects, and created the Tagmata, which was the elite arm of the military. His neglect of Italy, however, saw Roman influence continue to evaporate in that region. He was a vociferous persecutor of iconophiles, and made iconoclasm orthodox theological doctrine, for which his opponents gave him the name of Capronimos. John III Ducus Fatatsis John III had to fight to keep his throne, and proved to be a good general, diplomat, and reformer, leading an economic, cultural, and military revival in the Nicene Empire, leaving it the apex power in the Aegean Sea during the Mongol invasions, Manuel I Canemnus. Bringing the empire to the height of its power since the 11th century, Manuel I, despite several major setbacks, was an energetic ruler in every respect. His rule was a landmark of the 12th century, being a general, reformer, and successful diplomat, even being pen pals with Henry II of England. Though his wars did not always produce lasting results, the empire was internally experiencing a renaissance, and he was able to project the empire's soft power throughout Europe and the Middle East. His long reign marked a golden age in the Eastern Roman Empire. Heraclius Heraclius tirelessly worked to protect the Roman Empire from invasions by the Avars, Slavs, and Persia. By taking emergency measures, and his own skill as a statesman, he was victorious against the Persians and Avars, and started to rebuild the empire. His successes were unfortunately reversed by the rise of Islam, and the subsequent invasions by its adherents. He had still saved the empire from one fight for survival, and prepared for a second. Anastasius I Anastasius I revived the daily monetary economy, and left the empire with a massive budget surplus. He successfully bested the Persians and reclaimed the Balkans after years of Ostrogothic rule. His long 27-year reign marked a high-water mark in the 5th century, which had been marked with wars, religious unrest, and the conquest of the Western Roman Empire. The success of Anastasius I set the foundations for the golden age of the Eastern Roman Empire during the 6th century. Basil II Basil II had a nearly disastrous opening to his reign, nearly losing his throne in civil wars and nearly losing his life in battle against the Bulgars. But he triumphed over all of his enemies. He rooted out corruption and greatly expanded the empire's territories as well as its influence overseas, converting the Rus to Christianity. Meanwhile, he maintained a large budget surplus. His reign saw a continuance of the Macedonian Renaissance, and Basil introduced further land laws to protect peasant smallholders and punished his relative, Basil Lecapenos. His fearsome reputation and that of the Eastern Roman army was maintained for decades to come. 
To future Romans, he was Basil the Great and Basil the Bulgar Slayer. The only detraction to his reign was a rushed succession, and his own vow of chastity helped ensure the extinction of the Macedonian dynasty. Justinian I Justinian I brought the empire to its height during late antiquity, whose generals won victory against the Persians, Bulgars, Ostrogoths, Visigoths, and Vandals, extending Roman territory over North Africa, Italy, the Western Balkans, and southern Spain. He reformed the legal code and the whole legal system. He built and repaired many buildings and towns. He reformed the economy and administration. He had to respond as best as he could to horrific natural disasters such as the bubonic plague. His reign was a time of major cultural achievements such as the commentary on Aristotle by John Philoponus and Procopius's History of the Wars. After a largely successful reign of 38 years, he died in his bed at the age of 83. Constantine the First. Constantine the First, despite a checkered personal life, was a masterful general and politician who triumphed over all of his adversaries and seldom lost a battle. He was a restless reformer and continued the reform of the empire started by the Tetrarchs. He introduced the gold solidus, one of the most stable currencies of all time. He was an active builder and helped shape how Roman society would function for the next 300 years. He established Constantinople as a new Rome, one that developed into the new capital of the Roman Empire. As the first Christian emperor, he set the mould for the relationship between the church and the state for Christian monarchs in the following centuries. The future Romans considered him such a successful emperor that he was considered by them to be the greatest Christian emperor of them all. Thank you very much for watching this enormous list. I hope you enjoyed it, and please do like and subscribe to the channel. And this has been Eastern Roman History.